Hi guys, it's Janelle from Painted and welcome to week four of our live series on milk paint. I'm excited about today. I think today is going to be the most fun out of all the videos that you have watched so far because today we finally get to apply all the knowledge that we have been building on so far. So basically, if you have tuned in and you've seen the previous videos, um, and it's okay if you've missed them too, you can definitely go in the files and watch the previous videos if you have missed out. But now you know how to um, judge your surface so that you know what milk paint will do on it. You can feel confident and you can know how to mix milk paint. Um, you can know how to prevent bleed through from happening on your piece. Um, you can know how to store your milk paint. And most importantly, you can understand the different finishes that you can achieve with milk paint and how it's so um, versatile and it can create the most lovely finishes and not just one look. It doesn't have to be that farmhouse look that it's well known for, which is amazing. It can be very modern. You can basically make anything. And today what I'm happy about, and I can see people are tuning in, so thank you for joining. If, if, you, if you are joining live with me, um, please say hi. I know that I have witnessed on my end, comments don't come through half the time when I'm live, so I promise you guys, I'm not ignoring you. I do want you to know I'm located in Green Bay, Wisconsin. It's beautiful and it's sunny here. I'm gonna hopefully take my body and block the sun that's glaring through this big window behind me when we're painting so that you guys can see because majority of the time, I'm gonna have the camera tilted down so that you can see everything. And hey, if you have milk paint at home and you wanna paint with me, go ahead and mix some up right now and have a piece like a sample board and try some of these techniques with me. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. If you do have questions, I encourage you, pop them in the comments. And if I can't see them while I'm painting, I definitely will always follow up with you and answer them too. Um, I wanna be respectful of your time, so we're just gonna like dive right on in. And also, to be respectful of your time, one of the first things I had to do on the piece, because I'm gonna show you the techniques that we're gonna learn today, is we're gonna learn how to do the crackle effect. Um, we're also going to learn how to create that chippy effect that everyone loves, because a lot of times um, you want chippy and your piece might be dried out, right? Which is how this little bench that we're gonna be doing today, it's a dried out piece that if I just painted it, it's not gonna chip, right? Because we already learned that. So I'm showing you how to get chippy look. We're also going to do some advanced techniques, which is layering. So, because anyone can basically paint out, you know, a regular plain, you know, solid opaque finish. So today what we're doing is more of, like in a workshop, what I would consider like advanced techniques. Okay, so I'm gonna tilt the camera down and I'm gonna show you so far what I kind of did a little ahead of time. So I'm gonna tilt this down. Give me a second and you guys can see what I'm talking about. And then if I block, if I move my body, I think you guys can see everything. Okay, so actually, let me real quick, I'm gonna tie my hair back so that that's not falling in the camera view either. And hopefully you guys can see. If you guys can see everything, give me some thumbs ups. Well, I don't know if I'll be able to see the thumb up, thumbs up either. But um, this is the finish at the end of today, what we're gonna be achieving, which is a multiple color crackled finish. But I'm gonna teach you a bunch of stuff before we even get to this. But what I had to do ahead of time is I put down a clear layer of shellac over this dried out wood surface. And I did it ahead of time because why do you guys need to wait and watch shellac dry? So just know the first step I did, and I think all of you should have this on hand because when we talked about tannin bleed through, this was one of our preventers, which was shellac, um, to stop bleed through. Now, I wasn't concerned that this piece was going to bleed, but the reason that I did a coat of clear shellac on here is because I also talked to you guys about this version of shellac has like a waxy substance in it. And because of that waxy substance, it is amazing for creating a crackle effect. So what I did ahead of time, and you guys, it only takes about five minutes to be dried to the touch, so it's already dry. What I did was I used a cheapo little chip brush and I just coated the top of this with a layer of clear shellac. So that's the only part that you have missed that I did literally like 10 minutes before I hit the live button. 
So the reason that I did this is because the first thing I'm going to teach you guys is how to get the chip, I'm sorry, the crackle effect and the chippy look. So pretend, and I'm going to actually start painting out real quick because I'll talk while paint is drying. Um, the color, oops, I'm already splashing away. This is going good, huh? Um, Pretend your piece of furniture is dried out like mine, right? If I just painted my color directly on here without using that shellac, my paint is gonna soak right on into this and it's never gonna chip, right guys? Because it needs some form of shininess and the shellac is gonna work as a barrier now to make that paint not completely adhere to this surface but it's also a secret weapon to get the most awesome, amazing crackle texture. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna use the color Oyster Bar, which looks like this. And I did mix it up ahead of time just to save us on time. And if you're not sure how to mix milk paint, go ahead and look at the previous videos and you can watch the one on mixing. I do like to get my brush a little wet ahead of time, so I'm just gonna spritz it with water just so it's damp. It's not drippy or anything. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint. And whenever you're painting, you wanna paint with the grain. Let me see if you guys can see. Okay, I think you guys can see what I'm doing. Now, just to make a clean line, I'm gonna go against the grain right here. <laughs> I also don't recommend you ever do like a half and half on a piece um, because it's kinda hard to make your stuff match up. But obviously for this, purpose I had to give you guys an example I used to do full finishing way back in the day when that was popular inside homes and I always said um, if you're working with a partner like painting something always do the whole piece you never want one person painting one side of a wall and then someone else is you know meeting you halfway because technique will never look the same um, real quick I told you guys about how if I'm gonna distress something, I never give it solid opaque coverage because why waste my time um, going over spots that I'm going to distress anyways, and I, and I dry brush it. So what I'm gonna show you guys is some of these areas on here, I know I'm not going to do solid opaque coverage. And what I meant by that is I might just hit it with my brush a little bit and leave some of this natural wood peeking through because why put a bunch of paint down if I know I'm not going to want it solid there anyways. That's kind of like a when we talked about um, our coverage video, and I said it depends on your technique. That's what I meant by that. So I might save paint compared to another person because I don't paint as heavy, or I'm not putting paint down on all the surfaces like someone else might. So right now I'm kind of doing like a spotty looking job and I'll hold it up better once I get the paint down. But that's because I want my original substrate to pop through. Okay. So, first coat of milk paint. Pretty scary looking, right? It looks splotchy. Not so great. I left some of that wood peeking through because, hey, if I wanna show it, why cover it up, right? Now, you might wanna turn your volume down on your phone if this is annoying to you because I'm going to use a little heat gun to speed up the process. And also, heat is a secret weapon for creating crackle. When you apply heat to milk paint, it will naturally make your milk paint crackle. So I can see there are people joining us. Tell me where you guys are tuning in from. And I did see some familiar faces. I know my friend Debbie is watching. Um, so hi, Debbie. 
So tell me guys, where you guys are watching from? Like I said, I'm located in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And then another thing, now I'm just showing you guys one method on achieving the crackle effect. Another very common way to get like crackle is not even using shellac at all. And you, what you can do is you can actually mix your milk paint very thick and heavy. And when you apply it very thick um, and apply heat as well, you will get a crackle effect. Now what happens with that method is your cracks are a lot larger than the cracks I'm going to show you. And don't um, panic yet. Usually we won't see the cracks until we get the second coat. But if you look closely, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it. I have little baby hairline cracks showing right now. Um, with the crackle effect and also with the chippy look, a lot of times you, I always say you can't see the magic until you get that solid opaque coverage. So I'm going to go ahead and put down my second coat of paint. Again, I'm just going against the grain right there just because it's easier to make a straight line going that way. Oh, I should have showed you. I don't know if you guys saw that, but I just had a big red streak. Oh, my bodies. I hope you guys can see everything. I know the sun is so bad right here. I had a red streak in my paint. Um, we talked about pigment separation in our mixing lesson, and what that was is... It, to make this color, there's some um, red pigment in with it, and that was just a little piece of pigment that wasn't mixed all the way, and that's what that little red streak was, because I actually made this paint yesterday, and I should have did a little bit of a better job mixing it up today before I started painting. Okay. So if you're tuning in a little bit late, what I'm showing you guys is in this part, basically how to get a crackle look, but also how you can get a chippy look if your piece was already kind of dried out. Now, if your piece is shiny, um, chippy can happen all on its own. Like if you already had a very shiny piece of furniture, a lot of times you can just apply your milk paint and it's gonna naturally resist the surface. We still recommend you do a test spot but if your piece was dried out or like raw wood, it's never gonna chip. But by doing this little process of doing that coat of clear shellac first, followed by your milk paint, you can basically guarantee that it's going to chip. So um, you might wanna turn me down again. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with heat. Now one thing, your paint will never chip off and flake if there's still water and moisture in it. 
So if you're just painting regularly, like at your home, in your garage, I always say I like, I personally like to wait overnight and then you know by the next day if it was going to flake or not. Um, man, it's so hard for me to see. I hope you guys can see this. Can you see how it's all crackled up and chippy? I think you can. Well, it's not chippy yet because I haven't um, wiped off the flakes yet. And I can't see comments or anything. So, oh, actually I can see one by Fusion. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna show you guys is right now what I would do, let me just tip it, maybe if I angle it a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna scrape away so that I can reveal the substrate. And then I think you guys will be able to see it a little bit more. Um, I like to use plastic scrapers just because they damage your surface the least. You can use metal, just use it with caution. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of lightly, very lightly flake off what I can. And some of it is not budging. It can be two reasons. One, there could still be moisture in my paint. So I'm gonna touch it and feel if it's cool. If it's cold to the touch, that means there's still moisture in it. Um, mine is still kind of really hot because of the heat. So it's a little bit too soon to, to check because I can feel it's really cold over here. So I'm gonna just warm it up, dry it out a little bit more. But if you guys want a really big crackle effect, um, Fusion on their milk paint website, they have a blog post on creating the crack the crackle effect. You can go check that out as well. And they talk about doing it with the um, mixing the paint heavily method. Now, I showed you guys that blue dresser. Well, actually, yeah, I'll show it to you real quick. This one. Remember that? It did not chip at all. And I told you guys that if that happens to you, you can force the chipping with the frog tape. This is the frog tape. Don't cheap out and buy some generic form because I swear it doesn't work as well. So pretend you're waxing your eyebrows. Take the tape, stick it to wherever you want the paint to come off, apply a little bit of pressure, and then rip it off fast. And you see how the paint is all stuck to my tape? It pulls it off your surface. Now I'm gonna hide this layer because we're gonna do multiple things and I wanna be respectful of your time. But look at you guys. This is that chippy look that everyone loves. And I basically created this on a dried out surface that I would have never, ever been able to get this effect on, correct? So if you have a dresser at your home, a buffet, whatever, and you're thinking, I really want that farmhouse look, but I have no clue how to do it, buy yourself a can of this and follow those directions that I just did and you can create that, okay? I hope you guys liked that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put, oh, by the way, it also comes in a spray version. I'm gonna open this stuff back up because in order to layer, now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to do layers of paint. Um, I need to put down a barrier on top of this color because milk paint is porous and I'm gonna open it up and start painting because I want this stuff to dry too. Looks like this. You always want to stir it. It does have an odor, so if you are sensitive to um, smell, I, get, I, I, I recommend you wear a mask. Um, it definitely, if you can open a window, go ahead. I personally don't mind the scent of this one that, that much. It is nasty on your brushes. We talked about brush care. My great friend, Sherry Strickland, um, she gave amazing tip that you can rehydrate your brushes by just soaking them back into that stuff so you don't have to clean them with denatured alcohol or anything. 
but prior to using these cheapo chip brushes because they shed really bad um go ahead and like prime your brush and pull at it because i swear i still get shedding on them but what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go ahead and coat this with a layer of shellac you could use clear tough coat um you could use any type of top coat that is going to be like a water base, but the reason I'm doing the shellac again is because I want my top coat to crackle again. That's why I'm doing the shellac. Now, one thing to remember, um, let me see, can you guys see this? Yeah, you can. One thing to remember is shellac will um, yellow. So I would never want this shellac to be like a top coat as my final coat on something if I don't want it to look ambered over time. So what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna show you guys how to do resists. So if you hear um, a fusion merchant talking about resists and how to make paint um, multiple layers and you can do the same exact process with fusion mineral paint not just milk paint this is what they're talking about one thing I didn't tell you guys and I think it's important is no matter how amazing your technique is if your color palette doesn't work it's probably not gonna look the best so what I like to do is before I even start a project, I need to pick complementary colors that are gonna look good together. So I chose Oyster Bar, which is the darker color on here, and Toasted Coconut, which is like a really nice creamy color as the top coat. And for inspiration, because I was thinking, well, which color should I layer together? Um, I'm gonna show you guys. For in, while that dries, because I, I need that stuff to dry anyways. Can you guys see this corbel right here? This was my inspiration on color, on how to um, find colors that complement each other. So when you're trying to think of what colors can I even layer, whether it be a fusion mineral project or a milk paint project, go on Pinterest or look at furniture that's already in your home or if you're shopping in a furniture store or whatever, try to find pieces or I even go on Pinterest and I type in old doors or architectural salvage, old something, and you will find the most beautiful color palettes that way. And then you can look at like the Milk Paint by Fusion or the Homestead House Milk Paint line and try to find colors that match those old, authentic look, looking layered pieces. And that's how I can pick things that look really pretty together. So that's another tip. Okay, I'm gonna put you guys back down because I've seen some really you know, beautiful pieces, but like the colors don't complement each other. And then it's like, well, that would have been cool if the colors looked right together. Okay, let me kind of scoot some of this over. I was a little bit messy. Yeah, you guys can see my little spill going on over here. Okay, so when it comes to doing some resists, you do have some options on what you can use. I definitely have a favorite, and it's actually made by Homestead House. Homestead House is the parent company of Fusion Mineral Paint, and my favorite resist of all time is their salad bowl finish. I love this stuff. It's food safe. Um, you can use it on so much more than just your milk paint projects, so I say you guys should get some because you could use it on your cutting boards, your eating utensils, butcher block countertops, and it's amazing to work as a resist as well. So this is my number one favorite thing to use, which I'm gonna show you. Another option is our beeswax distressing block. I use these kind of together, so I like them both. Um, and I'll show you my tips and tricks on using this one as well. You may have heard people talk about using hemp oil as a resist. You definitely can use this too. I'm not a huge super fan of this one just because I feel like the control is a little bit less and I feel like it makes it does make the paint resist but then you kind of get bare spots. Um, you can use regular waxes too. 
anything waxy is gonna form a resist and make your second layer of paint not adhere. Okay, I'm just touching it, it's still tacky. Um, you know it's ready when it's dry to the touch. So it's a little bit still tacky, a little bit too soon. Um, I can go ahead and put my resist though on it. I just don't wanna put my paint on it yet. So basically any place that I put this, my second coat of paint is not going to adhere. So if this was furniture, well, this is furniture, but let's pretend it's a big piece of furniture, like a dresser or something. I like to put um, resists on places that would naturally distress over time. So the corners of things um, around the hardware, stuff that if I was grabbing cup poles that my, my knuckles would have like bumped into so that it looks authentically aged. Usually I have like a little um, artist brush and I totally forgot to bring one out here. So, oh well. This is going to end up being a display piece anyways. So I'm just going to rub some on so that you guys can see what it does. Um, I really love this crackle that happened up here. So I'm going to go ahead and put some of this beeswax finish so that this part peeks through on my second coat of the toasted coconut because I, I want to see this stuff. So I'm just going to plop it on. And here's the thing. If you have something that you dislike, you could always redo it. You could always wipe it back and um, recoat. So I always tell people, you know, it's just paint. You don't have to worry that you're gonna mess it up. Um, here's another tip. I'm gonna use one that has already been used. When it comes to using these, and they're also excellent for like your drawer glides, if you have like a sticky dresser drawer, that's why mine's kind of all dug in and looks a little bit bad. I've used this a lot um, on the edges of drawers. I think they work the best if you warm them up a little bit. So um, you can tuck them in your sock, tuck it in your pocket, use your body heat to even warm it up. Um, I have that little heat tool. You don't need a fancy heat tool. Your blow dryer will work as well. So I just um, warm up the beeswax ahead of time and I'm just gonna use the part that doesn't have yellow all over it. Yeah, let's go with that. And basically just hitting it with a little bit of heat softens it up and I'm just going to and this is just another resist it's gonna do the same thing as that salad bowl finish by making my paint not stick to this surface so I just want to show you guys and I'm just gonna kind of but when you warm it up it just spreads better And I wanna kinda of hurry up because I know I'm going a little bit long and I wanna be respectful to Team Fusion's time. Okay, so we're gonna dive right in. Hopefully the paint will work. <laughs> if not, thank God it's my piece. Okay, so the second coat is toasted coconut and basically we're gonna repeat the steps and get that solid opaque coverage again. I'm gonna get my brush a slightly damp I didn't tell you guys, but I am using the Stallmeister brushes. They're phenomenal if you've never tried them. And I do like a round brush when, when working with milk paint. I just feel like it holds the paint um, so nice. But you really can use any type of brush that you want. Um, milk paint's incredibly forgiving. It doesn't hold um, texture and brush strokes like a traditional acrylic based paint would, which is amazing, especially if you struggle with brush strokes. Milk paint could become your new best friend. Okay. Oh, I have chunks in this one. I should have definitely mixed it up better. But you know what? Those chunks might actually, I might be able to spread them out with my brush. So I'll go close and I'll hold this up to show you guys, but I can already see where my milk paint is resisting, where I rubbed down that um, salad bowl finish. And I'm gonna go light over those spots that I know I wanted to show that original color. Yeah, let me, so I'm gonna show you guys, 
if you get chunks of paint because you didn't mix properly or you had it settled on the bottom like I did, I'm gonna show you what to do. First, stir your paint well. Get the chunks out of your brush. Worst case scenario, if they dry, you can just lightly sand them off so it's not terrible. But I'm just going to get them out. And that's how easy it is okay see how I just saved it looked really I don't know if you guys could see it from back there but um, there were like a bunch of big clumps of milk paint that wasn't mixed properly so again I'm gonna speed up the process and dry it lighter color so remember how we talked about lighter colors are gonna have um, not as great of coverage as those darker ones so I can be prepared that this one might take more than just the two coats to get that nice coverage and I'm gonna kind of go a little bit over my line because I don't want that I'm not sure if that line's gonna look solid so I'm gonna try to just blend it out a little bit So to get better coverage, I could add, um, which of course, oh, I do have a mixing spoon in here. I could add a little bit more powder to my blend because I just mixed it with the one-to-one -one mixing ratio. I'm gonna go a little bit light here because I want that base color to peek through right there. But obviously my end goal is a very rustic looking stool. So you guys get the point. I just want to show you how to layer the paint. Let's see if you guys can see this.
Real quick what I want to tell you guys, and it's not dry yet, but if I hold my heat gun in one place for a longer period of time, can you guys see um, how I get much larger cracks? So if you want a larger crackle effect, hold your heat in, a, in that same spot for a longer period of time. That's another tip. So you can do that too. Um, and look at this. This is for a white color, two coats. I could... I definitely, because this is like a rustic effect, I'm just going to leave it at two, but that's some pretty amazing coverage in my opinion. trying to speed up things but like I said it won't um, chip off or crack unless all the water is evaporated out but you can see because I'm putting so much heat on this side which by the way this has not been sealed um, see how it keeps coming off because I'm getting so much heat on it yeah it's I need it to cool down first because it's super hot on the surface um, any paint whether it be milk paint fusion mineral paint it's always gonna dry from the top first so it might be you know feel dry to the touch but it's still wet below so I need it to cool down up here first and I can tell like on the sides it's still really cold so there's still too much moisture inside of it um, I know I'm I'm watching the clock and I didn't want this to go super long but I need it to dry in order to do its magic but at least you guys can kind of get an idea, but it won't do the flaking and the cracking to show the second layer until I get the milk paint dry enough. At least you guys can see it right here and what I can do is I can always post a picture um, later today once I let the water evaporate out but see how um, if I scrape it hopefully you guys can see that on your end too see how you can see the base coat of the oyster bar peeking through with the um, toasted coconut on top of it that's because we were able to layer the paint by putting that base coat of shellac and then also rubbing some of that salad bowl finish. Now, I don't know if the tape method is going to work, if it's still too cool, but hey, why not? Let's give it a shot. So I'm gonna put the tape, let me move this so I don't spill. I'm gonna put the tape on areas that I put that salad bowl stuff. So I gotta kinda try to remember. And I know I focused on edges, but it might still be a little bit too dry. There's some. Let me get a new piece. If you're tuning in late and you're wondering why I keep being a weirdo going like this, um, that's my way of checking to see if my paint is dry enough because if it's cool to the touch, it's definitely not. There we go. But as your paint loses its adhesive, you just need to keep getting more tape. Obviously, we can also use some sandpaper too, but that's gonna give us more of a distressed effect.
And what I might need to do, you guys, and I don't want to do it um, right now and make this super long, is I might actually just have to put a little bit more paint down more heavily. Because you can see it. You can see it's working over here where I had paint a little bit thicker. But right here where the paint is still too thin, where I probably need a third coat, to be honest, to get it heavily like this side, because I think I did put three coats on this side. Um, it's working right here, but it's, 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 I think, too thin to do its magic over here. Um, yeah, and this is just a little bit too cold still. But if, if you can see, we definitely have the effect in this corner right here that's nice and dried out. Okay, so then um, one question that I received on my personal page, and you guys, if you want to learn more, because we only have one video left after um, this video, definitely you can go check out my page. I have um, Fusion Mineral Paint videos on there as well, and I do provide more content um, on my page too. But um, I totally forgot where I was going with this. Oh, I will post pictures because what I'm going to do is I will end this video. I'm going to put another coat on here and get it to match up to this level and then um, finish this up, but on my own time because I want it obviously to look the same. And in order to get this, I need to definitely put one more coat without making this video way too long. But a, a question I had on my page is, would this texture then be really rough and gritty because of that chippy effect? And obviously it's not gonna be as smooth as just like a solid opaque paint finish. But if you want it to feel more smooth, what you can do, let me grab it, is take like a fine grit sandpaper and it's never gonna hurt. You'll actually create more chipping too because anything that's loose, see I'm gonna go over the part that's already been um, chipped. And as my paint's drying, this might help. It's gonna knock down any texture. And then with a chippy surface like this, which we'll discuss next week when we talk about top coats, our top coat options, using like our clear tough coat as a sealant on top of a surface like this would be excellent. And then that'll give it that smooth poly-like finish as well. Okay. Hey guys, <laughs> if you were just with me at the Paint It Beautiful page, um, I was doing the bench, this little guy and the video was getting super long over there and I wanted to be respectful to Team Fusion's time but I also thought you know some of you who are watching it might want to see like the whole complete process and I have to finish it anyways so I figure if you're watching it over there and you wanted to see the whole thing I'm gonna be finishing up and painting it anyways so you're welcome to watch and tune in with me and I have to do it so if you want to watch feel free to join me if not you don't have to but basically, if you missed it, you can catch the live over there. I just published it. And what I was showing you guys is how to create um, a chippy look, a layered look, how to do the crackle effect, all with Milk Paint by Fusion. Um, I ran out of time and I didn't get the complete full look that I wanted. And I basically, it's dry time. So in order for Milk Paint to do its magic, you need the water to evaporate completely out of the paint. So I needed to apply a little bit more paint and the colors that I am using are Toasted Coconut in the Milk Paint by Fusion line, along with Oyster Bar. And also, you guys, I don't know if you know this, but right now I have a special, because I'm promoting Milk Paint this entire month, I have all of my Milk Paint by Fusion on sale, along with my Homestead House line. And I'm only going to keep it on sale for a couple more days. I figure if you're learning about Milk Paint and you've been on the fence about trying it, now would be a great time to give it a go. So if you're tuning in and you wanna know what we're doing, we're basically making this look over here. And this is how far we got on the other page. And I just added a little bit more paint and I'm gonna tip the camera down. And basically it's like a spy cam. You can just watch me paint. So um, I probably won't be able to see any questions if you guys have any though, when I tip the camera down, but I'm gonna try to block my body because the sun is really bright today in here. But if you are tuning in, tell me where you're tuning in from. I'm located here in Green Bay, Wisconsin, but I know you guys are from all over the place.
So in order to get the um, crackle and the paint to chip, when I layered it, I need the paint to be thick enough. So that's why I had to go ahead um, and add some more paint. And as you can see where I put it on a little bit thicker, I'm getting some really nice crackle and some chipping. And then I was telling that you should use like a plastic scraper because it's not as invasive as like a metal one and it's not gonna damage my original surface. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a little bit more paint right here and thicken that up just so it matches my other side a little bit better. And by putting the paint down a little bit heavier, And I do have some chunks in my paint. I don't know. I thought I had mixed it up well enough, but obviously not. Hi from Anchorage, Alaska. I'm glad you're spying with me. I'm telling you, it's way more fun for me to do this with people than to do it by myself. So thank you for joining. And I'm glad I can see comments because on um, the Paint It Beautiful page, I have a hard time seeing the comments and I cannot see any reactions over there either. Okay, now I put the paint on super heavily. So here's a tip, when you're working with milk paint, if you apply the paint super thick, you can get really huge flakes but you gotta be careful because if you put it down too heavy, your paint might flake off you know, a lot and you might not get then the look you're going for. Now this is okay because like I said, this, this bench is really rustic and I wanted to kind of break up that, that obvious divide I had when I, I did this as a sample. Um, it's obviously not something I'm selling or anything. It's gonna be a sample um, for my store. Let me get a piece of paper towel to wipe this off because I have little flakes everywhere but if you missed the video the first one that I was doing I was showing that um, frog tape can be like our best friend and now I think we're let me see I'm gonna just adjust this I don't know if we're totally crooked or not but we can do some forced chipping. Now I think I have the paint still way too thin over here to get any of that forced crackle, but see how I can now get down to that substrate that I wanted to, so it matches this side. But once I start getting tape, or I'm sorry, once I start getting paint on my tape, I basically have used up my adhesive where I have to um, go ahead and rip a new piece of tape. And I was saying before, don't cheap out and try to use like a generic brand of tape because I've tried and I swear it just doesn't work as well. Yeah, I'm gonna put a little bit more paint on this part up here to make it match. But I'm gonna see if I can try to blend up my paint a little bit more. Oh well, the chunks don't look bad once I dry it. The one thing I love about milk paint is it's incredibly forgiving. Um, I feel like it never looks like it's messed up once you're done with it.
hoping you guys can see this. Give me, give me some thumbs up if you guys can see everything. There's a huge glare on my end, but I'm thinking you can. Now, I don't have incredibly big contrasting colors. It's really subtle. Okay, thank you. I just saw a thumbs up come through. But basically, what I'm doing is I layered um, paint colors so that that tan looking color is peeking through with that white color on top. And right now it's obviously really hot to the touch because I just hit it with heat. But, um, so let's say this was, you know, my big piece of furniture. We want to distress the edges to make it look, you know, authentically aged. And I want it to match. You know what, I'm going to use a sanding block. Sanding blocks are easier for me to apply pressure. I love um, the Dolphin brand ones, and this one is just the fine. Whenever you're doing a sanding block, less is more. Always um, go really light and then check where you are because you can take off a lot really fast. And if you do take off too much, it's just paint. Just add some more paint back. Another tip is um, have a spray bottle and just get it a little bit damp. And you can also just check your um, distressing by getting it wet so you can actually see how much paint you've removed. Because I always say you want it to look natural. I don't like my stuff to look like all perfectly distressed all the way around the edges exactly the same because to me that's not natural looking see right now my paint is really cold over here which means there's still water evaporating out of it it would never ever chip over here because it can't chip with the water still inside the paint so I need to get more heat on it and dry it out And while I'm letting that dry, I'm not super happy and loving this corner up here. It just looks a lot, it looks too plain to me. So in order to get back down to that substrate, I need it to chip. And in order to make it chip, I'm just gonna add a little bit more paint to it and build up that coverage, kind of put it on thick and then force it to dry fast with the heat. Now, like I said, you don't need the fancy heat tool. You can use a blow dryer.
Okay, see how before I said that corner was kind of boring looking and it was really thin and it wasn't doing much? By applying that other coat really thick, I was able to kind of get deeper down to my substrate and now I can, it might still be a little wet, but I can force that layer of the um, toasted coconut, the white color, off. And remember, this is where I put that resist in this corner because I liked how that looked. Oh, you guys didn't see that. Well, I put a layer of um, the beeswax finish up there. And now look at, look how cool that is. So, I'll take a picture and show the whole thing together, but now it looks um, pretty uniform. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, I think I like it. Um, I will take a picture when it's completely done because obviously I have to paint the sides and finish all of that up and everything. But um, if you wanna see everything, because obviously I did the first half um, in the Paint a Beautiful group and then the second half here on my page, what I will do is I will make a video of everything put together and then I will post one video all together so that you can see from start to finish exactly how I achieved this look. So. Thank you so much for tuning in with me, you guys. If you have any questions, definitely pop them in the comments and I'm happy to help you out. And I just hope if um, you haven't seen any of the other videos, definitely go and watch them because from start to finish, I am showing you how to use milk paint with confidence. And I feel like if you follow those directions that I have shared so far, you definitely should feel a little bit more confident to pick up a brush and it's really it's not, I don't think it's that hard at all. And milk paint is incredibly forgiving. So, um, like I said, have any questions, definitely put them in the comments and I'm happy to help guide you in your projects. Take care friends. Bye-bye.